Hey everybody, welcome to Bucket Man Scouting. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the state of the Nebraska Cornhuskers football program. Um, yesterday I did a video on the state of the Denver Broncos franchise. Um, it's really good insight. I encourage everybody to go check that out. Um, if you want the truth on what is really going on inside that organization, uh, check out that video. So the state of the Nebraska Cornhuskers football program <clears throat> um, I am really, really excited of what I am seeing from the Nebraska football program right now and moving forward. I believe that they have a great vision on what they want to do from the top down. We haven't had a structure like this in many, many, many years. Um, I believe that the Cornhuskers, after the Bo Pelini era, even after the Brian Callahan era, even though how bad that was, we still were a line-centric type team. But even going to Scott Frost, Mike Riley, I believe the one thing that the Huskers lacked was player development and an identity on both sides of the ball and as a football program. Now you bring in Matt Rule, who clearly has an identity on what he wants to do, running the football, play great line of scrimmage play, be a physical dominant team. I can respect that. Um, the one thing I like about Matt Rule is in Trev Alberts and Ted Carter is they all have the same vision. You know, that's what the Denver Broncos lacked. That's what the Huskers lacked for years and years and years. They didn't have an identity. Even under Scott Frost, Scott Frost had his issues. He was he was all over the place. Same with Mike Riley, even though he was a cool guy, an okay guy, but that's not going to win you games. Um, the Nebraska Cornhuskers need to get back to player development. They need to get back at focusing on rebuilding the trenches rebuilding things from the inside out. And I believe that's what Ted Carter, Trev Alberts, and Matt Rule all have in common. They want to build from the inside out. They want to be a program that is not mentally scared. They want to be a program that develops players. And they want to be a program that holds their head up high. And they want to be a proud program. And bringing in Matt Rule... A lot of people don't give him the credit where credit is due, what he did with the Panthers. Um, I know that they didn't have the success because when you're in the NFL, he even said it on the podcast with Taylor Lewan and Will Compton is like, you have all these egos and all these opinions that you can't come up with one simple vision on what you want to be as an organization. And that's what the Denver Broncos are struggling with now because they have no identity. They have no family culture. They have none of that. And then you look at Nebraska, they have all of that accumulating. It's going to take time. But I could see where this football program is going. But Matt Rule even said, you know, he was a line-centric guy. He's been a line-centric guy going back all the way to his time in Temple, Baylor. And even with the Panthers, his defense and offensive lines were very solid. And I don't think a lot of people give him the credit for rebuilding those lines in Carolina. But you see in this recruiting cycle, you see him going after offensive defense alignment. You know, bringing in transfer portal guys that make sense. You know, I would like to see Matt Rule go out and get some more coverage centric linebackers. Um, draft, you know, develop these guys. You know, th that's the one thing. You can go out and get all the commitments that you want. But again, the one thing I'm seeing from Matt Rule is he's getting players that fit his scheme. Like under Scott Frost and Mike Riley, he, they were just going out to California and all these other states getting players just for what the 24-7 sports um, recruiting people said. You weren't going out and getting players that fit your scheme, and I believe that's what Matt Rule is doing here. Um, Matt Rule is an honest coach. Matt Rule is going to hold his players accountable. And we need accountability. Nebraska has lacked that for decades. We need accountability. And I believe you have that under Trev Alberts and Ted Carter. Um, and with Matt Rule, what I would like to see more of is him getting more 
guys that are three tech, one tech defense alignment. I'd like to go. I would like to see him go after guys that are covered centric linebackers. And hopefully that comes over time. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, yeah, I'm just really excited from what I'm seeing from that rule. And you you clearly see a difference in this Nebraska program compared to the Denver Broncos program. It, it's it's head and shoulders above it. I mean, they're on completely two different wavelengths. And I, I've said that many, many times on Denver Broncos Mile High View. I encourage everybody to go check that out because I've mentioned it many, many times. Um, you know, the the Huskers aren't in a PR. They're not they're not into that bullshit and i'm 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 really happy that matt rule has put a damper on it and i'm really happy that matt rule is keeping things close to the chest and you know going out and actually recruiting because i think scott frost and mike riley recruited but they weren't out in the trenches they weren't out there recruiting guys in the state of nebraska going to aurora high school going to battle creek going to going to ainsworth on a consistent basis going to st louis going to texas the pipeline even in the Big 12, in the Big 8, Nebraska was such a pipeline for Texas. They they built roots there. And uh, I think a guy that a lot of people are sleeping on um, for the assistant coaches is Terrence Knighton, the defensive line coach. I, I think he's going to work wonders. Um, Terrence Knighton was a very good player in the pros, was a very good player in college. He's going to bring the best out of these players. And I think what you've seen... Even with Dylan Raiola, I know a lot of people are thinking that he's only here to get um, Dominic Raiola. I believe that's his name, Dylan. I, I don't know the names. They they run together. Um, I don't believe that. I think that Raiola it was kept for a specific reason because he fits what Matt Rule wants to do. And I think we just got to give him time. You know, he was here for a year. Scott Frost and Raiola, I don't believe, really matched very well, even with Mark Whipple. I, mean, I think it was more of just desperation than anything. But you're seeing with Matt Rule more of a steady ship, more of a clear vision on what he's want to do. We're going in that direction. We're not trying to skip steps like the Denver Broncos do on a consistent basis. So I'm very, very excited from what I am seeing from this Nebraska Cornhuskers football program. I'm going to be very curious on what spring ball's like. They're getting commitments left and right right now. I'm really excited for some of the offense alignment that they got, especially Ben Scott from Arizona State. I think he's going to be a, an instant upgrade. I would love to see him play center or guard, rebuild those interiors. So. I just wanted to give you guys my insight on what I am seeing, specifically on the football program at Nebraska. Um, I'm really excited for the future of the program just due to the fact that, like I said, you could tell <clears throat> that there's a clear vision. You could tell that there's a family culture. You could tell there's accountability from the top down, that they have the same vision on the top down. I will put in the link in the description the uh, – the interview that he had with Taylor Lewan and Will Compton. Um, it was a really good listen, and I actually really enjoyed listening to it. So thank you guys for listening. Um, I encourage all you guys to go look at Denver Broncos Mile High View, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Take care.